Hello and welcome to the Saturday Slate Breakdown for NFL Week 16. I'm your host, Matthew Mato from Lamps.com. Joined here by Jacob Lane and Jason Gilbo. Merry Christmas Eve if you're celebrating. And uh, we have a full slate of Saturday NFL games as the three island games are actually going to be on Christmas, the Sunday, the 25th. The New York Giants are taking on my Minnesota Vikings, a four and a half point spread in favor of the road. New York Giants, 48 over under. It is going to be a whiteout day for the Vikings, so they're going to wear all white uniforms. They're asking all fans to wear all white. The end zones and logo are going to be white. It, it kind of looks pretty cool, copying Penn State, I guess. Um... But Jacob, you are on the New York Giants. I do want to throw a stat out here. There has been two games in NFL history that teams have come back from 20-plus point deficits at halftime. Both times they were led by Kirk Cousins. Uh, how do you feel about the Vikings coming back again from a 20-point deficit in this one? I feel that it gave me some good value on bet betting on the Giants this week. Um, no, I, I was joking to my friend. I was watching that game with him, and I was like, damn, I might actually have to bet on the Vikings next week. With the way that first half went, um, because I, I thought the books would overreact to that, and you know, obviously they came back, and this is probably the line we were going to get before next week or before last week's game, anyways. But yeah, I like the Giants here. Uh, the Vikings' offensive line, I think, so is pretty poor. Twenty first in pass blocking on PFF. Um, they've allowed forty one sacks, the sixth most this season, and you know, a lot of that has been Ed Ingram, their rookie guard, who contributes to allowing a lot of interior pressure. I know he's on Matt's shit list, so. Um, Dexter Lawrence, who has had a fantastic season, most pressures of any interior defender, I think I think he's going to torch Ed Ingram on the interior. And then you look on the outside, and you have guys like Kayvon Thibodeau, massive game last week, fully arrived, that sack for forced fumble and a touchdown, and 12 tackles overall. Aziz Ojolari is fully healthy now, playing better football. Leonard Williams is back and healthy. And, like, their defensive line is intact for the first time all season. And what, the, what that allows the Giants to do, and, I mean, there's still going to be, be a blitz-heavy scheme that's still – Don Martindale's like kind of forte, but it allows them to not have to blitz on literally every single drop back because they can get pressure with those four guys now. And I think you're going to see a little bit more of that moving forward. And, you know, they still have some injuries in the secondary that are concerning. I think Justin Jefferson probably still has a pretty good game against them. And if you want to look at some other receivers, I think you can. But overall, I think this Giants defense should be on the up, on the come up with those defensive linemen getting healthier. And I just trust Brian Dable to scheme up a, a good offense against this really, really poor Vikings defense set. I mean, week after week, we see it. doesn't matter who they're playing. They're going to allow a lot of yards with this zone coverage, shell coverage scheme. And I think Daniel Jones, with a healthier Saquon Barkley and some emerging wide receivers, I think it's, it's plenty to get some stuff done against this Vikings defense. Jason, where do you stand on this, uh, I don't know, this belief? It's yeah. The Giants are about it's, it's not on the Minnesota side. Um, just, <laughs> I mean... You know, it's, I mean, I guess, you know, when you do come back from 30, it's it's nice, but, like, you also should not yeah. be down 30-plus points. Um, yeah, the Giants, I mean, this is a team that, you know, kind of tough to figure out week to week on, on a betting stance, but, you know, I think we like the general direction of where they're going. Um, Brian Dable, I mean, obviously just kind of a master class job of this roster and the fact that they're 8-5-1 and one in the thick of the NFC, like, it's just crazy. Um We've continued to see Richie James, Isaiah, you know, Hodgins, like, kind of pop up. I mean, Darius Slayton's been a go-to guy for Daniel Jones, and, and Jones continues to play just really well. Like, he limits turnovers. He makes the throws that you need to win. I mean, that fourth and nine or whatever it was against the Commanders was uh, absurd. Like, I mean, there was two moments that I knew the game was over. It was when Thibodeau was just posing after a monster sack, and I'm like, uh, he's just going to eat all night. And then that fourth and nine, I was like, this game's done. I Just for some reason, I just knew that was it. Um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of a good spot just because the Giants can't attack certain weaknesses of the Vikings like that offensive line um, and, and be able to kind of, you know, put some pressure on Kirk Cousins, which he really is Jekyll and Hyde against the Blitz. You don't know what you're going to get out of him at that point. Um Factor that into a Minnesota defense that I know we don't really have a ton of confidence in, to put it lightly. Um, I think you add that in with the mixture of not knowing what you're going to get from Cousins and probably the likely spot that I think he regresses a little bit here. Um, four and a half is such a great number because I do think this game finishes within three to four points. I do think, you know, with the Vikings, the opposing team has a chance on the money line all year. And... Luckily for us, the value's always been there just because that record's been so high. So uh, I think you take the points here again. I just don't have any sort of trust um, that they can kind of get the offense clicking. And I'm curious to see what it, say, what it looks like 
with a close game because the Vikings, when they offensively put up points, it's been in spots where it's like, oh, cool, they're down 10 to 14 plus points and they need to air it out. That won't be the case this week. So I think they'll have trouble kind of really putting this one away or even potentially lose it late. So very quickly, this line has moved to four and a half on DK and a couple other sports books. Weirdly on FanDuel, it's still three and a half. Most sports books are at four. Jacob, I want to ask you this, and this is not made as a got em or for you to explain your side of the story. I, I'm just, for the viewers, I like going over this information because I find it interesting. I'm kind of curious to hear your thoughts. Right now, 55% of the bets are on the Vikings, but 75% of the money is on Minnesota. So it, that indicates, in my opinion, that Sharps are probably on the Vikings side. And the fact that DraftKings was so quickly to react to move from 3.5 to 4.5 makes me feel that way as well. What do you think the Sharps are seeing in the in this matchup? Because I'm a Vikings fan. I, I think I'm actually in really agreement with you and Jacob or Jason's analysis where I kind of lean if I was betting this game, which I try not to bet Vikings game on the Giants' side. What do you think those Sharps are seeing in this one that they feel like they, they have kind of a, a little bit of an advantage here? No, I mean, I think we're still getting a lot of public money this early in the week. I think limits okay. haven't been increased yet, so... I think, you know, we're recording this on Wednesday. Normally we do this on Thursday, and the limits have increased, and a lot more of that sharp money kind of starts to flood in. Um, I do think this will be three and a half by kickoff, and, yeah, I'm not I'm not stressed about early week action, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I think um, a lot of people are going to be excited to bet on the Vikings after that comeback last week, so I'm not entirely surprised by that. I think that's fair enough. And, again, it was more of just to get an explanation on where you think that money's coming from, and I think that's a really good explanation as to where. And uh, we get these informa- this information because we are associated with DraftKings, and they email us kind of where the bets are and what the handle is, and that information just came in to us a- about an hour ago, so that's pretty up-to-date uh, as we record on this Wednesday. I'll talk really quick about my bets. I- I've been playing player props on Minnesota Vikings games this year. It's probably been one of my successful ways to, to make monies in what has been a pretty down year for my betting. Uh, standards, but Justin Jefferson, I like him over 92 and a half receiving yards. I really think that A, Kirk Cousins has learned to just force feed him because he's the best wide receiver in the NFL, and they, that's the smart thing to do to win football games, but also B, he is chasing the NFL record in receiving yards, and I think that's, he's very hungry for that record. I think Kirk Cousins wants to be a part of that record. I think Kevin O'Connell's kind of excited to get him that record, and just, I think this is a decent matchup against a, a Giants team that, like you guys said, they can get pressure, but Kirk Cousins, I want to give him a bit of credit. He's really been tough. Like, he's stayed in there. He's taking tons of hits, and he's okay with it. What, Jason? Why are you laughing? You're not going to give him any credit? It's just that, you know, I don't know. We're, here we are 48 minutes in talking about how tough Kirk Cousins is. You know what? <laughs> Go talk to his chains. Other props I like, Hawkinson over receptions. I think the line's going to be a little deflated after uh, somewhat of a down week for his receptions, but I, I really think he's a, a lock-in for 5-6 to six in this type of matchup where the the Giants do get pressure. He's going to have to check down a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of design plays for Hawkinson. I'm going to be on the New York Giants passing uh, pass catchers in this game once they come out, and I'm also going to play a half unit on the over. I think 48 is just a tad low. Don't think this Vikings defense can stop anyone. They made some nice adjustments last week, but they were playing the Colts, so I don't really... I mean, they still gave up uh, quite a few points on the defense side of the ball, despite the pick six and, and some other turnovers, but and the special teams touchdown. But I, I I think the Giants score quite a bit of points, and I think the Vikings have another good offensive day. So uh, I think this one gets close to 28, 24, something around there. Um, any other bets for you, Jason? Bets for you, Jacob? I might be running it back with Isaiah Hodgins receiving yards. Played that on Sunday night and a hit. We'll see what the number is once it comes up. But, yeah, I think Daniel Jones is a solid passing game here. Yeah, he's one of them that I'm waiting for the line to come out on. I, I really want to see where all the pass catchers are before I dictate where I'm going to put my prop, but he's kind of where I'm leaning at this moment. I've really liked what I've seen out of him when it comes to his routes run. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you liked this video, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Hit the subscribe button if you want more great NFL content as well as college football content as we're covering every single bowl game and the college football playoffs. Again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you for the next one very soon.